Hey everybody, this is Alex from Detroit Dart Works. Uh, today I'm going to do a little uh, assembly slash mod guide on my newest little project, which is the Weird Flex, but okay. Uh, it's going to turn your stock Nerf Curve Shot uh, Rival Flex into a shell fed uh, single shot shooter retaining the auto open breech. Um, there are two versions of the kit right now, uh, one of which takes uh, Colonel Wasp Firefly shells and the other one takes Flypoint shells. Um, this already installed is the Colonel Wasp kit. Um, only real difference is the size of some of the pieces um, to accommodate the shells. They function the same, they're installed the same. Uh, some of the parts are even the same. So we're gonna go through uh, from start to finish the whole thing. There's a little bit of internal shell cutting we're going to do. Nothing exterior except losing the uh, stock barrel. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, so I've already gone ahead and unscrewed the body screws from this one. The only ones you need to worry about are the main body itself. You can leave this one and you don't have to worry about these two. Um, a little tip that I may or may not know from experience is that because there are springs and things under pressure in here and sometimes Nerf blasters tend to pop when you open them, if you lose any body screws, these are the same. So you can replace the body screws with uh, the extra ones that you're not going to need. You'll need to keep this one, but these two are spares up here essentially from this point on. Uh, another tip. Go ahead and before you unscrew anything, prime the blaster to open the breech and then deprime it by just kind of squeezing the trigger while you hold the priming rod and let that plunger go back. Uh, because there is an extension spring in here, uh, if you open it while it is closed, it will go pop. Uh, so we'll go ahead and take that side off the blaster and set it over here for right now. Uh, we'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, so here we have the internals of our flex. We're going to go ahead and take some parts off. First thing we're going to do is take off this barrel. Uh, keep this extension spring. We're going to use this again. The rest of this can go. Now in here, uh, there's a few things that we're going to change. Go ahead and lift out your prime, uh, plunger assembly. Uh, one thing you can do, I'm not going to do it in this video, uh, if you're noticing you don't have the best air seal in here, and this is that unfortunate design of a big uh, channel down the side that supposedly help the plunger head get moving faster before it hits the compression point. Uh, but if you're not getting a great air seal in here, unscrew these screws, pop these clips off, take the whole thing out, uh, check your O-ring in there. You can do the old school, some uh, Teflon tape underneath the O-ring, uh, re-loop everything up really nice, get it all back together. Uh, that should help a little bit. Um, we'll go ahead and handle this real quick. Uh, first thing we're going to do is we need to remove this little, uh, it's not really an air restrictor, it's just to keep rival rounds from coming back in here and keep them positioned right. Uh, so let me grab my pliers and I'll be right back. So we need to remove this little doohickey here that keeps rival balls in place. Uh, the best way to do it is just to grab it and twist. Old school. Now there's some stuff in here, uh, some parts. I like to go ahead and just pull as much of this stuff out as I can. Um, there's like a little grid shape in there. And in the end, and clean it up a little bit, in the end it's going to look basically like that. Um, you can go ahead and actually let's just go ahead and we'll twist this whole cross section out there too. Just unrestricted airflow as best we can. All right. That's good. Good enough. All right. So this little ring in here is uh, solvent welded in place to the black parts, so you're not going to have an easy time removing it, but it really doesn't uh, interfere with anything. This whole point of just cleaning that out is just to have better airflow through here. 
So that's done for now. I'll set that to the side, come back to the shell. Now this is your trigger sear mechanism uh, catch, and this is going to be the part that auto opens that breech. It's kind of like a secondary catch for when you close the barrel. We're gonna keep both of these. So just keep those together, set them off to the side. Obviously we're keeping our trigger, uh, put that aside. And then this is the safety. Uh, this little part we are not using, get rid of it. And this part, um, we don't need it and it gets in the way uh, of the new internals, but I like keeping the button for a nice clean, kind of unaltered outside. So I just take some flush cutters and just right above here, just that shot off, but I'll go get that later. And there you go, nice clean little button. Still fits in there, Boop. just perfectly. And we'll still actually click up and down. Just doesn't do anything now, so purely cosmetic. So we'll put that up to the side. And we're doing good. All right, so we got all our extra pieces. So at this point, we need to clear out a little bit of uh, interior space here for the new stuff. Um, the extension spring for the barrel was around this one, this post originally. We're actually gonna be relocating it down to this post uh, just because spatial reasons. Uh, but we want to clear this out so that it does not get in the way. And again, just take your flush cutters and we're going to try to cut it flush with this inside rib here. So just kind of there. Separate it from the wall here. Boom. And we'll clean that up a little bit. There we go. All right, so that part's done. Now we're gonna come up here and we're also going to cut these flush right here, this post and this little bracket here. Uh, this was all holding in the safety. Uh, so since we're deleting the safety, we don't need it. And it's not gonna affect anything else about the blaster. So let's get that out and chop that off as well. There you go. Uh, now, there's some clips here. We're going to leave those two clips in place where the orange part comes through, but we are going to chop these little posts down here. Uh, to make room, leave the hole. That's where your trigger rests. And you're going to leave this in place back here. So just right here, that post, that post in the ribbing this post. The only other change we're going to make is this rib right here uh, just to make sure we have enough clearance for uh, the new parts to slide where that stop is because it has to go further out and further in than the stock barrel was to accommodate loading shells. Uh, if you only have flush cutters like I'm using now I like just making a few snips along the whole length and then just applying a little bit of force and bending them down until they come out. Alright. And these snip the bottoms, let's say they're cooperating. now. Now on the other side of our shell, I'm probably going to lose a few screws here, but we'll get this back in a second. Um, you'll notice there's not really the same posts that were on the other side, so we don't have to do much cutting here. I'm just going to remove this one rib here. Again, just to make sure we have plenty of clearance for our new parts to slide back and forth. All right, so again, just a series of cuts, bend them down, 
flip them back till they break off. There you go. If you have a Dremel or something else that you prefer to use, feel free. It doesn't really matter as long as you remove them. I like getting them as flush as I can just to avoid any issues. All right, so there's our screws. We'll take care of those later. All right, and that's it for shell work. So we're gonna put the shell, other side of the shell back here and pull this one back into frame. All right, now at this point, we're going to start installing the printed pieces. Uh, you're gonna need two uh, SAE size 113 O-rings. Um, one goes into this, this is the adapter. It sits up here against the plunger rod or plunger tube. And one sits in here in the breech, um, right up in here in a little recess that will seal between the barrel and the uh, shell. Uh, I've already pre-installed them on these. Uh, it's a pretty simple process. Just drop it in, make sure it's laying flat, and just take a shell and kind of wiggle it around like that up against it to make sure it pushes into the recess. And then with this one, you just kind of work it in with your fingers until it hits the recess and make sure it's evenly in the whole way around. But like I said, I went ahead and did that just so they would be uh, done and we didn't have to fiddle with it on, on camera. So I'm going to go ahead and install... Um, our adapter to plunger. It's pretty easy. Keep the stock o-ring on. If you think it needs a little bit of lubrication, you can add that. Uh, but you're just going to work this on there, making sure the stock o-ring stays on and just push it gently till it's all the way seated. Um, something I like to do just for peace of mind, I'll take a little wrap of e-tape and go around that once just to make sure that it is holding tight and I guess technically to make sure there's no air leaking out but there isn't because of that tight fit and that o-ring in there especially if you add some lubrication so we'll just go ahead and wrap this around just a few passes there we go. And that'll help hold it nice and tight. And if you wanted to, you can add um, a little bit of glue inside that recess and that'll make it a permanent thing where you won't change it. I don't like doing that just because 3D prints can wear out. They can break sometimes and it would be a pain to haul that off um, if it was glued in. So I like just using a little bit of tape and putting that on. So plunger tube is ready to go. So now we are going to assemble our catch and our breech. So for this part you will need two tiny little M2 four millimeter screws with two M2 hex nuts. The hex nuts sit inside here. There's little recesses. You just drop one in. I actually like to go ahead and start these screws since they're so tiny and kind of fiddly to work with. As you can see, I like to go ahead and start them into the bottom of this uh, before I try to put the pieces together. This makes it a little easier. Uh, to know which way to do it, there's recesses kind of for the heads on one side. That's the side they go into. Pretty straightforward and self-explanatory. So hold it. There's a little lip here on the bottom, that little rectangle and squared off area that will line up perfectly. Just position them. You can have the threads of the screw poking through a little bit and kind of find the hole that way. And then drive your M2 screw in. So it's snug with the hex nut. And then take your other nut, line it up with the recess in there until it drops in, and do the same thing. Keep a finger inside the breech over it just to keep the uh, nut from popping out, and then just drive that screw in until it's snug. 
you just want to rub, run your finger through there, make sure nothing's poking up. Uh, in the fly point version, it won't because the walls are thicker. It's a little less clearance in the Firefly version, um, but it should be fine unless you're using you know, uh, six millimeter screws for some reason, in which case you might have to back them a little bit out. Uh, that's why I would say stick with the four millimeters. That's what it's designed for. All right, so at that point, you've got your catch installed to your breech. You should have your O-ring seated right here in this recess, right there. Um, and at this point, we're ready to go ahead and install stuff. Um, one thing you can go ahead and do now, I suppose, it's easier to show it, is go ahead and install your barrel. Um, this uses a Old Fusion Design style collet system. Uh, so it's quick swappable. You can simply unscrew your muzzle, pull the barrel out, put a new barrel in. Uh, that's especially good for if you want to drop the FPS down uh, to like HVZ levels and it's you know too hot on a six, seven inch barrel and you want to drop it down to more like a spamp length, 100 millimeter barrel, um, which is what's in this version, you know. There's a few inches difference and that'll affect your FPS here. So it's cool that you can do that. Um, I really like the call it system that OFD came up with and I really appreciate him allowing me to kind of make my own based on his ideas. So uh, pretty simple. Just kind of drop your call it nut in there, push your barrel through. There we go. Now, this point I like to keep a finger in through the breech on that o-ring just to make sure I'm not accidentally pushing the barrel past the o-ring it'll butt up right against it you want it kind of snug against it to make a nice air seal and then you just simply screw on the collet the muzzle and just give it a nice little twist should be nice and snug and you can look in here I don't know if I can get this on camera but you can look in here and see that it's right up against that o-ring in there and once this whole system's together you'll put a shell in and it'll close and push it up tight against that o-ring to give it a nice air seal all right at this point take your extension spring go ahead and get it onto the little hook on your catch here like that and we're going to go ahead and put it onto our post here as well and then set our piece right here. It's going to want to kind of pop off because it's so tight and that's okay. Take your plunger assembly, uh, slide the adapter into the back of the breech here and then seat your plunger down in its grooves. Take your internal, so your uh, catch sears and stuff. The peg goes here. The plastic leaf spring goes against the plunger tube up at the top. I'll set that one in first and then this one kind of feeds in through a hole here and this little nub goes inside the plunger tube here and then the hole goes over that post from the catch. So feed it in and right over the top there and then our trigger sets right in back where it goes and then we'll put our little doodads back in. I think this was the iron sight right there and this was our non-deleted safety delete just to keep the resid uh, the image nice and clean all right everything looks good so we're going to go ahead and take our other half of our shell position it over there you may have to put a little twist to the breech just to make sure that the post in there is lining up and Everything is now nice. And then we just screw our shells back together.
Ah, screw. All right, and we're done. Um, obviously, make sure you put a orange tip on here or something for safety, both for public image safety, but also you don't want to expose mar uh, metal barrel hitting someone. That hurts. So, flap a scar in there. Close it, close it's fine. Open, breech opens great. I'll take a fly point shell. Uh, this one has a half dart in it. Drop it in there. Make sure it seats. There we go. Uh, if the edge is a little um, burred from your print, uh, you can take a deburring tool and just kind of run it around inside that adapter's uh, front lip. Uh, sometimes it takes a little bit to kind of wear in uh, the edge there to make sure the shells feed smoothly in. Go ahead and close it. That's nice and tight. I'll open it and pop it out. Shell come right out with the uh, way it's tilted. Um, I recommend when you want to just kind of flip it over to toss the empty shell when you're done. Go ahead and put that shell back in there. There we go. So uh, these shells will take a single half dart or whatever kind you want. I've got some PZ Max darts here. They will also take these now growingly popular 50 cal foam balls. These are the ones from Monkey Mods. Um, and you can load a shell with one do a single shot, two, double, or three, and do a nice triple shot. Uh, it looks like a fourth might fit in there. It does not. It will fall out the front, um, but three, you know, three shot shell is pretty nice. And fire a nice little shotgun blast at close range. If you go with the Firefly version, it can actually fit four, no problem. So that's cool. Uh, obviously, each additional ball you add in is going to decrease the uh, FPS a little bit, um, but with a triple shot, it's only about 10 FPS lower, I've noticed, than just doing a short dart. About 10 to, 10 to 20, depending on what size barrel you've got. Um, in my testing, uh, which was with the Firefly version, but should be pretty comparable to the Fly Point version, um, this barrel, which is about 150 millimeter long, so six inches or so. Um, this is a Esper barrel, I believe. Um, this was getting in the range of about 140 with short darts and about uh, 120s with um, triple shot, what I'm calling monkey balls, uh, 50 cal foam balls. Um, with the shorter spamp style barrel, which I personally really like that compact look, um, this is getting closer to about 130 with a short dart, 120s, depending on depending on dart fit into your shell, um, and about 110 or so with the uh, triple monkey ball shots. Um, on this one, I did go into the plunger and improve the air seal. So if you're noticing you're not quite getting those numbers and you don't feel like you're getting a great air seal, uh, I would go back into that plunger. It's a lot easier than it was on the knockout. Uh, on the knockout, the cap was solvent welded on. On this one, it's just two screws and two clips. There was no solvent welds on mine. So it was really easy to get into. So definitely you can go in and do that uh, if you need to. Um, and yeah, I'll, more kits like this will be coming, I think. I'm going to try to do one for the knockout. Uh, be cool. I liked that this had that auto open breach, uh, but the knockout is super popular, so I'll probably do that as well. And then the new uh, rival Fate is supposed to come out sometime in the future. Uh, very similar platform to the knockout and the flex, and it has that auto open breach. So there will definitely be a version for that as soon as I can get my hands on it and develop it. Uh, yeah, as always, thank you guys so much for your support. Um, 
it means a lot to me. Uh, every purchase that gets made, whether it's kits or STL files that I sell in my shop, goes right back into the hobby for me and allows me to have fun with something I love and also to develop cool things. Uh, every mod I make is made for myself first and if people like it and want it, I'll put it out there uh, for them. But yeah, a little, a few bucks here and there for the STL files does really help me, you know, buy filament <laughs> and uh, buy blasters like this so that I can make cool stuff. Um, so yeah, thank you guys so much for your support. I hope you enjoyed this. Um, it's a fun little blaster, uh, especially great if you have invested into, you know, the Flypoint ecosystem or the Firefly ecosystem. I know the new Colonel Lost Fireflies from Monkey Mods are just out. The Walcom Firefly is out. Uh, so I really wanted to do a version that used those shells. Uh, that way you can do a full loadout, have your high FPS Firefly, and then have a nice little sidearm loaded up with a shell ready to go uh, for close quarters in case you don't want to hit someone with 200 FPS or for whatever reason. Um, if your HVZ allows, you know, this would make a great hvz close quarters kind of hold out thing just keep keep it shell loaded three or four balls in there just, you know if they allow these 50 cow balls that's awesome uh just you know guaranteed hit on anyone coming at you at close range with that nice little spread yeah. all right so this is uh again this is alex with detroit dartworks and hope you guys have a great day and i'll catch you next time Thank you.